examples of people that I, that I believe are false worship, that God put upon my heart. Hallelujah. For example, people that come into his presence, they lift their hands, hallelujah, and they say, we love you, Lord. We exalt you. We're lifting our hands that are holy unto you. But those same hands that we worship, that we lift to the Lord, we touch women that not belong to us. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are touching people that we should not be touching. A young man that has a girlfriend or a boyfriend, he comes into the presence of God. He lifts his hand and he says, I worship you with holy hands, but those hands the next day are touching things that should not be touched do you understand worship isn't just words worship is a lifestyle hallelujah praise God hallelujah we come into his presence and we lift our hands to God and we say with our lips we love you Lord we love you Lord we love you Lord you are everything to me Lord but in reality the next day hallelujah we are using the same thing that we are worshiping God we are cursing people we are we are we are saying things that we should not be said through our mouth Jesus said you cannot have sweet water and bitter water coming out of the same fountain amen church hallelujah oh how many times hallelujah we come on a Sunday Sunday and we worship God and we say we love you Lord I am yours hallelujah but the next day this very body that we have which the Bible says is the temple of the Holy Spirit we lay down with prostitutes with things that are, are un, unpleasant to the Lord is that true or not how many people do this on Sunday they worship God and they say my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and yet we mix our body with things that are filthy of this world that is not true worship true worship hallelujah is someone that keeps his body as the temple of the Holy Spirit and only submits to the things of God and not to the things of the flesh for example we know every everybody knows are you recording this you are <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Everybody knows Carrie Underwood, right? She claims to be a Christian. But did you ever see the way she dresses? I mean, I mean, it's so many, it's so, the shirt, the, the skirt, is so many that any little move we can see. Let me ask you something. Are we worshiping God with our clothes? It's not just coming and lifting our hands. Hallelujah. We come on Sundays and we say, Lord, my heart is all yours. But yet the next day my heart is divided with everything else in this world. That's false worship. We lift our hands and say, God, my hands are yours. Instruments of, your, of yours, God, I use it. But we write checks and there's no money to cover it. I remember one day when I got a phone call. A young man said, this, I'm so-and-so, I'm not going to tell you the name, of course. And he said, I am going to open a, a restaurant in New Bedford, he said. And he said, that's wonderful. He said, I'm a born-again Christian. I saw you preaching at a church in, uh, in, in um, uh, I forgot the name of the city, the city now. Where there's a lot of Brazilians there. The city, that's a lot of Brazilians. I mean, they're like this, uh, Framingham. They said, I saw you preaching. And I know you're a pastor in this local area here. But I have a little problem, Pastor. Can you come here and, and help me? So I left everything and I went there and he says, Pastor, this was before we had the ATM machines. Remember that? We don't have any the ATMs. We didn't have it at that time. And he says, I have this check and I've got to pay it and I can't cash it. Would you do me a favor? Would you give me the $500? I'll give you the check and money. You can go to the bank and the money is there. I'm a man of God. I'm a Christian. I want to help my brother. I want to be a blessing to my brother. I mean, I believe that he's telling the truth. Because when I speak, I speak the truth. So I base people based on me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because I worship God not only in the pulpit. I worship God everywhere I go. And not just worship with lifting your hands here. But it's, it's your life has to be worship unto God. What you do, what you say, how you speak, what you live like. Hallelujah. The dress you put on. Please, I'm not here to point my finger at anybody. But sometimes it's just, It's sad. How can a woman claim to be loving God and, and, and she's got her, her breasts out in church? Hey, I didn't come here to see your breasts. I came here to worship God. And you know, 
If you know Brazilian people, they are very scandalous with their clothes. You know how it is. Sometimes I have to preach with my eyes closed. Amen. So I gave him the money. I gave him $500. Monday I go to the bank and there's no money to cover it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Worshiping God is not just coming here and lifting our hands to him and lifting our voices to God. But our life, the things that we do, what we act like, the things we say is a testimony of the worship that we give to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Many claim that they love the Lord, but their hearts are divided. They're more, they, they love God with all kinds of passion, but yet they love the flesh with all kinds of, of, of passions. This cannot be. Hallelujah. This cannot be. Hallelujah. For the Bible says that God is holy. And without holiness, we shall not see God. Amen. Every Sunday, we come. We even jump in his presence. We glorify God. I love to jump in the presence of God. I am very extravagant. I love to worship God. I'll dance if I have to. But I do it for the glory of God. But the next day I'm not in some nightclub dancing for the devil. You understand what I'm saying? Because this body belongs to God. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And everything that I do, everything that I say, every move of my life, everything that I think, when it is evil, I bring it into captivity, into the power of God. Amen. So many people, they, say, they claim to love God. They worship him. But you know what Jesus said? You will know my people by their fruit. It's not the way they worship only, but it's their lifestyle. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Everything that I do. Everything that I say, everything that you do, everything that you say, hallelujah, has to glorify God, has to give him worship in spirit and in truth, hallelujah. Your talk, hallelujah, the way you walk, hallelujah, your vestures, hallelujah, oh, the way you look at things. There are some things as Christians we cannot put our eyes on it. Why? Because my eyes are the lamp of my body, hallelujah, and I've got to be very careful where I put my eyes. Why? Because my eyes, I, I hear to worship God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the circumstances that you go through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. We need to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I'm reminded of a young man, actually two of them. His name is Paul and Silas. Hallelujah. They're in a prison. They've been whipped. Their backs are pouring out blood because they've been whipped. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that around midnight, hallelujah, when it's the darkest, when the enemy raises against you with everything that he's got, that's the time that you lift up and you worship the Lord. And the Bible says that these two people, hallelujah, they're in jail not because they committed some crime. They were in jail because they worshiped the Lord and they expelled a demon that was trying to be in the same realm of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just have to take the, hey, we have to take the boots and put them on, hallelujah, and let them know who we are. You need to expel some demons sometimes. There's a lot of people that I use it, that they're living a fake life, hallelujah. They show you one thing, but they're another. They pronounce one thing, but they live something else. And the Bible says that around midnight, they begin to worship God, hallelujah. And they begin to pray in spirit. When you pray in spirit and you worship the Lord in spirit, something is about to happen. There was an earthquake in that place, hallelujah. Doors were open, hallelujah. Do you want to win people to Christ? Do you want to people set free? Let your life be, hallelujah, a worship of the Lord. Hallelujah. Live what you preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other day I walked into Cumberland Farms and I said, I told the girl, I said, I need this. And the young man was next to me and he said, are you a Christian? I said, I am. He says, do you live it? I didn't have to say that I lived it. You know what? The, the girl on, on, in the counter said, yes, he does. I know this man. Hallelujah. 
Isn't that wonderful that when God uses someone else to tell other people that you are living for the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Do you want, want God to move? You want people to be set free? You want people to get saved? Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I'm reminded of a young man. His name is Daniel. They had a proclamation that he could not ask or during that a time period that they couldn't ask anything from anyone except the king. But that didn't stop David. That didn't stop Daniel from worshiping God in spirit and truth. The Bible says he got home as he usually did. That's what his lifestyle was. This was nothing different to him. He just did it naturally. We should worship God naturally. Not when, not when we are forced into it. Hallelujah. The Bible says he opened the windows towards Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And he prayed and he worshiped the Lord. And because of that, the, 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 this came to the king and they said, King, there is a man in your kingdom them that disobeys you he worships God in spirit and in truth and we hate him we hate him he's different let me tell you something God hallelujah has raised you up in this world hallelujah to be different to show this world that you really worship God in spirit and truth with what with your life hallelujah my worship is more powerful when I live what I praise, hallelujah. Too many people are in church claiming that they love God, but yet they love the things of this world. It's a reality. Famous people, because they're famous, we can like give them a chance. Oh, they're famous, they can do this. Hey, my Bible tells me that we must dressed modestly we are presenting a holy god we are projecting to this world a god who is holy which the bible says without holiness we shall not see god god is not brazilian he's not american he's not portuguese he is god and he's holy and he expects holiness without it we shall not see god hallelujah but I want to see the Lord, hallelujah. I want to see God, hallelujah. Perhaps you say, but pastor, when you worship the Lord, do you see him? Through the spirit of God, I do, hallelujah. This, this, the, the eyes of the spirit of God open my eyes inside of me. When I close these eyes, I can see God. I don't need some idol in front of me to worship him because I, can, I know that he's with me because I worship him in spirit and truth. And the Bible says that when the news got back to the king who loved Daniel, the Bible says, he loved Daniel. The enemy will raise some things against you. He will come against you. But you don't have to worry. God always will raise someone that will go for you, that will fight for you. Why? Because God does not abandon those that worship him in spirit and in truth. And the Bible says that he did everything he could to get, da to get Daniel from not being thrown into the lion's den. But because of the decree that could not be revoked, hallelujah, he had to obey his own word. And they threw Daniel in that, in that pit. Hallelujah. And you know what's so funny? When you live in the spirit... Animals will not touch you because you live in the spirit. Animals love flesh. Hello, do you understand? The Bible says he was there for the whole night. And you know what's funny? I believe he slept. I believe he was tranquil. Hallelujah. I believe he was in peace. I believe he worshiped God in spirit and truth. While the king could not sleep a wink. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible says he didn't want to hear no music that night. He was so perturbed. He was going to lose his best minister hallelujah and he comes any more in the morning he says the god i like that I, I just love that he said the god daniel that you continuously serve hallelujah you're not just a you're, you're, you know you're not just a show person you just don't do it when you want to show to somebody you are what you are everywhere you are hallelujah you worship god in any circumstance whatever you're going through you continue to worship god hallelujah that's what god is looking for he's looking for those that worship him and spirit and truth regardless of the situation regardless how bad it is regardless if the lions are about to eat us hallelujah and you know what he said i have been faithful to you king 
as I've been faithful to my God. And you know the story. He called all those people, those guys that came against Daniel as they threw him into that, to that pit. They weren't even touching the ground. The lions were already eating them. That's what will happen to those that are false worshipers of God. I'm reminded of three young men, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abdignago. Nebuchadnezzar, he built this big idol, and he said, you've got to worship it. If you don't, I want to know what God can set you free from my hand. But he forgot one thing. These were worshipers that worshiped God in spirit and truth. They worship in the house. They worship in the street. They worship in their, in their, in their work. They worship everywhere they went. Hallelujah. Worship isn't just in church. Worship is in your church job hallelujah there's some husbands that they love to worship god here but they get home oh boy i'm reminded of the little boy the service ended and the pastor said son you can go home he said i don't want to go home he said why why you don't want to go home because when my dad is here he's a wonderful man but when he gets home he doesn't become a Christian anymore. Yeah, you see? When you worship Jesus in spirit and truth, you do it here, but you also do it in your house where no one is looking at you. <laughs> and you give God the praises for the wife that he's given you. I thank God for the wife that God has given me. I thank God. What a wonderful lady she is. Hallelujah. You have to be grateful for what God has done, what God has given you, your husband. If he's a good husband, a man of God, oh, worship God for that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that the king said, I want to see the God that can set you free from my hand. And you know, I love their answer. They said, God, he said, King, you know how we feel about this. In other words, you've seen the way we live. Hallelujah. We just don't worship God in the temple. We live what we worship. Hallelujah. We live in front of you. You have seen our testimony. We will not bow down to your God to your idol hallelujah and let me tell you something else whether God will set us free or not it doesn't really matter he can if he wants to but if he doesn't we will still not worship your God hallelujah that's worship that's worship and truth and in, in spirit God is waiting God is looking God is searching hallelujah because it's hard to find too many people claim to love the Lord but their lives say something else hallelujah how many men they lift our hands to God but yet those very hands steal things they say they love their wives but yet they lie to them they say they love your neighbor but yet they try to do harm to them that is not true worship it's so difficult to find those that worship God God and spirit and truth because God searches for them. Hallelujah. God searches for them. God is spirit. Hallelujah. And we must come into his presence in, his, in the spirit. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. My flesh has been crucified. In other words, it is dead. Hallelujah. It does not, it does, it does not possess me anymore. I possess it by the power of God. Hallelujah. May we stand, please. Hallelujah. No matter the circumstances that we are going through, God expects us to worship him. In spirit and in truth. The same person that you are here, you must be at your house. You must be at your work. You must be at your supermarket. Everywhere you go, you must be the worshiper that worships God in spirit and in truth. Because it is hard to find them. That's why God has to search out the, the world. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to be a true worship. I don't want to be a false worship. I want, I want to hear one day the faithful servant 
Go into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to be rebuked by the Lord. I know that we're not perfect. And we try to hide behind some of that. But the fact is that we have a spirit in us who is all powerful. That spirit is God in you. Hallelujah. Emmanuel with us. He's inside of you. All you have to do is step into it. And whenever you're going through something, just step into it. Hallelujah. He'll be there. He's there for you. He will never forsake you. He said, I will take you by the hand. And I will direct you hallelujah hey heaven and earth may pass away but my word my word i promise you, i'll be with you i will never forsake you god cannot deny his own word hallelujah but we see too many christians too many people claiming to love the lord claiming to worship god but their testimony speak something else i don't want to be that type of a person I don't want to be that type of person. No, you, please don't, don't get me wrong. We all have our moments. We all have our little falls every once in a while. But you know what's so good about it? That just may fall. But the Bible says he will rise up again. Amen. Oh, praise God. Let us worship God, not just with my tongues, but with our very lives. Hallelujah. Not just worship God with our hands. Hallelujah. But everything that we do, everything that we say, I don't, I don't like hearing swearing. I don't like people swearing around me, cussing around me. Hallelujah. And you know, sometimes TV does that, doesn't it? But yet there are Christians that stand in front of a TV and they hear all this cursing. You think God is with you, sitting with you? No, he's not is holy God is holy either we are or we're not either we are born of the spirit or we're still in our flesh hallelujah let us bow our heads let's pray I'm not here to judge you let the Holy Spirit move in your heart let him reveal to you that area in your life that you need to worship God through that area hallelujah Please understand, God, when he talks to us, when he tells us something, when he shows us something, it's because he wants to fix things in our lives. He doesn't want to harm you. He doesn't want to shame you. Hallelujah. He just wants to fix things. Hallelujah. And he can do it. Like I said, I don't know what area of your life that you need it. Perhaps it's in your money. I don't know. Are you worshiping God with your money? Or is your money becoming your God? It's your job. Hey, are you worshiping God in your job? Do you let people know that you are what you are? That you are a Christian? That you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Some people work next to a Christian 20 years and that person never says a thing about Jesus. You think that man is worshiping God? No. To worship God is to express Jesus in our lives. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this word. It's a simple word, but I believe it's a word for today. We have too many people, Lord, that show one thing but live another. Too many people pronouncing one thing but doing something else. Hallelujah. And your word says, Lord, that liars will not enter the kingdom of God. How many of us are in the presence of God and we claim that we are truthful with God, but yet we lie to our neighbor, we lie to our friends, we lie to our pastors many times. Hallelujah. What area of your life that you need to worship God in spirit and in truth? Your eyes. You know what Jesus said? He said, your eyes are the lamp of your body. Oh, and he said, be careful. Whoa, if your light is darkness. In other words, you claim to be light, but you're living in darkness. That's very powerful. In other words, be careful what you're looking at. Because what you look at comes inside of you. It's not what comes out of you that's going to harm you. It's what's coming inside of you. Hallelujah. Christians. They wake up late at night and they put on their, their computer and they watch filth. But yet in the morning they come and worship God. You say, Pastor, I think you're making this up. No, I'm not. Oh God, help me. 
help us not just to be Christians in your house, not just to be worshipers in spirit and truth here, Lord, but in our house, in our jobs, around our families, oh God, so that they will see Jesus in us. Let us, let us shine, oh God. Let our very light shine through us, God, in our worship, in our talk, in our dress code, our Lord. I'm sorry. You cannot be a worship of Jesus when you are dressing scandalous. No, you can't. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. Let God. Hallelujah. If you need prayer, I want to pray for you. You can come up here. I'd like to pray for you if you need prayer. In some area in your life that you need, you don't have to tell me what it is. God knows. God will do it. Hallelujah. Has she given her life to the Lord already? She said, look, that's wonderful. That's the best. Jesus is the best. 30-something.